Hermes has officially taken flight with their Quarter Horse Mark I technology demonstrator, marking a huge step toward their goal of fielding fully reusable hypersonic aircraft for the U.S. Air Force. And that wouldn't just be a boon for the Intel analysts out there. It could also mean delivering payloads at hypersonic speeds, but at a fraction of the cost of hypersonic missiles. So let's talk about Hermes's Quarter Horse and the future of high-speed aviation. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is a short-fused episode of Air Power. This first successful test flight of Hermes's Quarter Horse Mark I technology demonstrator was announced on May 27th and was centered on demonstrating the aircraft's high-speed takeoff and landing capabilities, which are pretty much essential due to Quarter Horse's high mock design. Hermes also made a point to highlight just how quickly this aircraft matured into a flight-ready test article, going from a clean sheet design to a flyable demonstrator in just over a year. I'll quote Hermes's CEO, AJ Piplica, now. Mark I has redefined the pace of developing and flying new aircraft. I'm incredibly proud of what our team has accomplished. We've proven the viability of our iterative development approach. But this is just the start. We have much more to do as the bar rises for the next iteration. Now, according to the company's press release, this first test flight also validated the firm's digital design and performance models, including aerodynamics, stability, and control, alongside a long list of subsystems like propulsion, fuel systems, hydraulics, power, thermal management, avionics, flight software, telemetry, flight termination, command and control, and a whole lot more. Hermes has taken a very aggressive approach to developing these quarter horse aircraft into high supersonic test beds while developing the internal skill sets necessary to rapidly field advanced new airframes, starting with the quarter horse Mark Zero. Now, this non flying prototype was internally dubbed the Iron Bird and was unveiled in October of 2023. Like the Mark I, it had been designed and built on an extremely short timeline, going from a design on a sheet of paper to a testbed demonstrator in just 204 days. By January of 2024, Hermes reported that their new Quarter Horse Mark Zero had successfully demonstrated the functionality of the aircraft's power and control subsystems during taxi tests at the Arnold Engineering Development Complex in Tullahoma, Tennessee. And now, just 16 months after Quarter Horse Mark Zero began taxiing down the runway, its successor, the Mark I, has officially taken flight, effectively already completing the testbed's technical objectives of demonstrating Hermes's ability to take off and land in a large, heavy, uncrewed aircraft design that needs to balance the rigors of high supersonic flight against the lower speed control required for takeoff and landing on conventional runways. The SR-71 Blackbird, which remains the fastest reusable crew jet in history, faced similar challenges due to its own high-speed design. With a disclosed top speed of Mach 3.2 and a wingspan that was nearly half that of the U-2 spy plane, the SR-71 had to land at much higher speeds than most aircraft, often as high as 265 miles per hour during its approach and 207 miles per hour at touchdown. Now, high-speed fighter aircraft, like the Mach 2-capable F-16, on the other hand, can land at speeds as low is just 150 or so miles per hour. Likewise, Hermes's quarter horse stretches some 40 feet long, but boasts a wingspan of only around 12 feet for a bit more than a third of the width of the F-16's outstretched wings. With the first flight of Quarter Horse Mark I now in the books, Hermes will begin revising their designs for the already in development Quarter Horse Mark II, which the company says will be the first of these technology demonstrators to fly beyond the sound barrier. 
This new aircraft will build upon the flight control and subsystem successes of Mark Zero and Mark I, validating the same control systems and functionality at speeds of between Mach 1 and Mach 3, as Hermes continues working toward the final iteration of Quarter Horse, the high supersonic Mark III. Now, this aircraft will be the culmination of Hermius's efforts to date, combining the airframe maturation derived throughout the Quarter Horse program with the company's unique high-speed propulsion system design that they've dubbed Chimera. Now, this turbine-based combined cycle engine could really be thought of as two engines in one. Hermius's first Chimera used a J85 turbojet, followed by a ramjet. Now, turbojets are adept at powering aircraft from a complete stop up to around Mach 3, though their efficiency does start to drop off above Mach 2. Ramjets take over at high speeds, accelerating from around Mach 3 to hypothetical speeds as high as Mach 6. Chimera's ramjet is designed to accelerate quarter horse past Mach 4 and potentially even beyond Mach 5, at altitudes as high as 95,000 feet, which would mean flying both higher and faster than the SR-71. Hermius successfully demonstrated Chimera's ability to transition from turbojet to ramjet power in a high-speed wind tunnel as early as November of 2022. But Quarter Horse Mark III will be the first platform in history, at least that we know of, to demonstrate this functionality while powering an airborne aircraft. But Hermius's plans definitely do not end with Quarter Horse. With lessons learned throughout this effort, Hermius will then begin development on their Dark Horse hypersonic military aircraft, powered by not one, but two larger Chimera engines developed around the powerful and combat-proven Pratt & Whitney F-100 turbofan. Now, to that end, Hermius broke ground on a new hypersonic engine test facility in Jacksonville, Florida, in September of last year. And this facility, dubbed the High Enthalpy Air Breathing Test Facility, or HEAT for short, will allow Hermius to rapidly iterate on both aircraft and engine design, something Hermius's chief revenue officer, Zach Shore, emphasized in our conversation with him earlier this year. Though in keeping with his role as the company's resident money guy, Shore also mentioned that Hermius's testing won't fill the facility's entire testing schedule capacity. That means the company can then sell test time to other firms or even the Air Force itself for any of the reported 70 or so hypersonic weapon and aircraft applications currently drawing funds from Pentagon coffers. And this, in itself, is actually a very big deal in the realm of hypersonic aviation, because some of America's biggest challenges throughout the arguably fictional hypersonic arms race of recent years has been a lack of sufficient testing infrastructure, compounded by the need for more raw data about how designs perform in the hypersonic regime, which is commonly described as speeds in excess of Mach 5, but is more scientifically defined as the speed in which your interaction with the air begins to cause its molecular bonds to vibrate in a way that changes the magnitude of the forces generated by that air on your aircraft. Or to put that into very simple terms, at around Mach 5, the air you're traveling through gets very wonky. And designing aircraft or weapons that can manage subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic flight represents an absolutely immense aerodynamic challenge. Now, once complete, Dark Horse could provide the U.S. Air Force with a similar high-speed intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance, or ISR capability, once provided by the legendary SR-71. And that is a capability that's sorely needed, despite America's increasingly ubiquitous satellite infrastructure. Satellites just can't be everywhere at once, and they are very predictable. And that's why the U.S. still operates a wide variety of ISR aircraft. But maybe even more importantly, this dark horse aircraft could deliver payloads to far-flung targets at speeds in excess of Mach 5, providing the same short timeline and immense kinetic power of a modern hypersonic missile but at a fraction of the cost per strike, 
And in keeping with Hermias's rapid iterative approach, they say their slightly larger Mark II quarter horse supersonic demonstrator is actually already on track to also fly this year, which is an all but unheard of timeline in aerospace. As Hermias's Piplica himself has explained in the past, the aviation standard for new designs is usually around 1,400 days, or around three and a half years, and at this pace, Hermias will have fielded and tested three aircraft in roughly that same amount of time. But obviously, Hermias still has a long way to go to accomplish their hypersonic objectives, and you better believe we'll be keeping tabs on them all along the way. And with that ends this short-fused edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure to swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.